Indian paintbrush add fiery reds to the newly greened grass. And bear grass grow high, scattering throughout the park. This is springtime in Glacier, when the land comes alive with a rainbow of wildflowers parading from the valleys below to the high mountain meadows above. Today, Glacier National Park preserves more than one million acres of land. But the history of this area goes back far beyond the establishing of the park. Many Native American Indian tribes lived near this land for thousands of years. Traveling from the west, they passed through the area of the park on their way to hunt bison from the Great Plains of the east. They carved out ancient roads near today's Logan Pass. Many names of mountains, lakes, and streams originated from the Native Americans. Heavy Runner Mountain was named after a Blackfoot chief. And Going to the Sun Mountain was also named by Native Americans. Several different tribes traveled through here, but the largest of the tribes were the Blackfeet of the Eastern Great Plains. These Native Americans often fought with the tribes who came to the plains to hunt for bison. Glacier remained unexplored due to the hostile Native Americans and the great land barrier of the mountains. But the late 1700s brought men from the fur trading Hudson Bay Company looking for new land to hunt for beaver. These were the first white men to see the beauty of Glacier's mountains. Soon after their discovery of this area, rich in wildlife, the trading companies built forts and fur trapping became big business. In 1803, the United States bought much of this land east of the Divide from France as a part of the Louisiana Purchase. In 1806, Chief Mountain was recorded on a map by the famous explorers Lewis and Clark, sparking interest in the area. Surveyors from the railroad were sent to find a low route through the mountains for the Transcontinental Railway. Marius Pass, a route used by Native Americans, was chosen by the railway, which traveled through the northern Rocky Mountains. In 1891, the railroad here was completed, part of the Great Northern Railroad's Transcontinental Route. This made the accessibility to the area of the park much easier. At the same time, homesteaders came here looking for a new land to work and live. Mineral exploration brought prospectors and miners in search of great wealth. As the abundance of people came, the thought of protecting the land became an issue. In 1891, the Lewis and Clark Forest was established. John Muir, America's foremost naturalist, visited this area. He wrote, Give a month, at least, to this precious reserve. 